Deus. Say, are you Lord?
the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody sing. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let's sing that one more time together. Sing. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise we can offer. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. So lift your voice and say, Ho. Stay right there. Say, worthy is the Lamb. There's no one more worthy. You gave your life. You gave your life to set us free. You are holy. Say, you are holy. Just offer God something sweet from the fruit of your lips. Come on, just open up your voice and just talk to the Savior. He's a good, good Father. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Father, you've made ways out of no way. And Father, we thank you. Just on this past week, God, you've been a provider. Just on this past week, God, you've been a healer. And we thank you, God, right now. Father, your people stand before you this morning. God, humble, thankful, grateful. I wish I had some grateful people in here that could just tell God, thank you. Father, we thank you for the blessing and the privilege to be able to come before your throne. Unashamed, Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Father, you've been good to us. Father, we pray for every broken heart that has walked in this room. We pray that you would heal. We pray that you would deliver. Father, just let us know that no matter what the circumstance is, you still have all power. Father, we thank you for the greatness that you are. Morning by morning, new mercies. I said morning by morning, new mercies. I'm so thankful that you didn't bless me with yesterday's mercy, God. You knew that I needed something new. You knew, you knew that I needed a fresh touch from you, Father. And so thank you for touching us this morning with your finger of love. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we ask that you would just touch Pastor David wherever he may be this morning, God. We pray that you allow your spirit to follow him, lead him, surround him. God, we thank you for every person that's in this room and whatever the circumstance is. God, we know that you have every solution to our problem. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you thanks. Now, if you can agree with that, come on, just put your hands together and give God some glory. Come on now, if you really can agree with that, make God know with your hand clap how much you appreciate him this morning. Come on, lift your voice and say thank you, Father. Come on, say thank you, Father.
what great jazz team would do this multiple times with Plato and other names. But how did they get that out to the whole people who were Jewish people? They thought they were playing the stone guitar. That was curious. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'll do my best. You'll do the rest. And hopefully, you all will do the rest. So, that, I guess that thing is a habit of power. Choose your place, choose your Put it up there, or I can read it to you. It's um, Matthew uh, 22, 36 through 40. It said, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And second is like this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Of these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. One thing that we learn is that God is trying to, to draw us into him and he uh, is, the, is the father of all. And I'd like to, at this time, recognize all of you fathers uh, that are here and the ones that are, are watching online and, and honor you because of what you've done for your family and, and and taking the lead in, in being a father. It's a big responsibility, but it's an honor and a privilege to be a father. And thank Brother David for the, uh, the father figure he is for his family and the boys, and he's been a blessing to many, many people, and I thank God for what he's doing here in this church, and I'm glad to be a part of it. But the greatest father of all is our Heavenly Father. He is the great I am. He is the God of Abraham. He is the God of Isaac. He's the God of Jacob. He is the true and, and living God. And all other gods are subject to him. And he has all power. He is truth. He does not lie. He tells the truth and nothing but the truth. And he expects truth and honesty as us as well. And there is another father, and he's the father of all lies. His name is Satan, or Lucifer, the devil, which we all know the story of how he was in heaven. He was a, a heavenly being. He is still a heavenly being from heaven, but he's, he's a spiritual being. And he was so smart and so wise and so convincing, he pulled one-third of all of heaven's angels. Man, that's, that's some kind of power. And he, he, and he was trying to... He rebelled against God, and since then, there's been a war in the heavenlies and here on the earth of God fighting that power of sin. And he uh, created earth. He made uh, created the earth. He made man out of the dust, and he took a rib from Adam, and he made a woman. And there is only two genders, male and woman, male and female. Now, I'm not going there because that's a biblical topic. What happened, uh, he told them, he said, I'm going to have y'all in this garden of Eden. Everything you eat, everything you need is here. The food, the climate, everything is perfect. He said, the only thing I'm telling you you can't do is you can't eat of this tree of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, you can, he said I've got you the strawberries, the pineapple, everything that you dream of that we enjoy today. You had all that there. And they were living in a paradise. It was a mini heaven right here. In the meantime, the devil had been drawn down to him and his third angel, heaven's host angels, and they happened to be placed here. And I'm going to try to uh, explain and, 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 and pin the tail on the donkey of, of, the, of, the, of who, who we warn against. It, it's, it's Satan. And he, he, God created a place for him when he did that. And they call it Hades. The lake of fire, and his angels appeared, and everybody he can convince between now and the time Jesus comes back or ends his coming are going to spend eternity in in that place, and that's the, that's why I'm saying choosing this day who you serve, and that wasn't good enough. They Adam and Eve were there in the garden. We know the story. He he chose the serpent, which is a snake, and he said, "Okay." 
because he, he needs to eat of this fruit. This is the best fruit in this whole garden. It's better than those strawberries. It's better than the pineapple. If you, if you really can keep this, and when you eat this, you'll become like God. You'll be, you'll be wise. And so he went to Adam and said, look, we're going to stop on this, this deep activity. So the devil deceived them, and they ate the fruit. And the next morning, God came. He came to everybody that, that did get there. He came there in the garden, and uh, he was looking for them. Well, where are they? And I think he knew that they were hiding it, that they took it out. They didn't have clothes on. And they, and they sinned. They entered in, into him. And they, before that, they, they knew no sin. They were, they were like Jesus, like God. They were, they were, they were honest and, and pure. But that, eating out of that fruit, the devil, the first thing he did was defied God. And then the next thing he did, he, they had two sons, Cain and Abel. He convinced Cain to kill Abel because of jealousy. The devil's tools are, are mighty. They, they, he has all of the failure, all the pretty things that God gave us to enjoy, and he takes everything. God, uh, God is pure. God is holy. God is righteous. And the devil is everything opposite of that, and he is out to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy the church on the earth. That's his goal. He's doing a mighty uh, move right now trying to do just that. But the, the next thing that happened, uh, it got so bad, God destroyed the earth itself. And there was, there was Noah and his family spared. But what do you know? The first thing Noah does, the devil gets him and, you know, right off the boat. He, <laughs> that's how the devil works. He's trying to figure a way, like a rat trying to get in the corner, and he's rounding and trying to find a way to get in. That's what the devil's doing in our life. And and then uh, I, I'll, I want to go in, into my testimony, and this is not easy for me, and I don't go here and, and, and what I'm going to be sharing. Uh, it just, uh, I don't dwell there. Uh, I, and I'll explain why as we go through this. But I was uh, raised in a church, in a family that went to church. My parents didn't send me to church. They took me there. And as a young boy, I accepted Christ as my Savior. And, and I was doing good. And I got with a, this crowd of people. And that's so, that's, that's the devil, how he works. He draws you into something. This is fun. Come do this with me. And I said, no, nah, that's not what I want to do. Come on, you can do it. It's not going to hurt nothing. And so uh, it's partying. Partying is okay if it's a birthday party or a party celebrating Christ or something. But a party to go and get drunk and to do stupid stuff is not what God uh, is happy with. And I got into this crowd, and I ran with them. And, and, and I, uh, I graduated from high school. I went to PRC. And I was partying there, and and and, and I met um, my first wife there, but I didn't didn't I just met her. I didn't date her or anything, and and I went, went to work with the railroad because uh, I got an offer to to do that instead of you know finish my education. And a lot of the people that started the railroad with me had college degrees, and so I said this is good. And so James Robinson came to to Hattiesburg. This was in uh, probably. 1972, along in there, and I went to Crusade, and I was God jumped all over me there. He said, "Hey, you 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 need to get you need to get serious. You need to quit playing. You you know you need to get your heart in tune with me he, and 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 get things right." And I said, "You know I do." I said, "I haven't been happy with all this garbage. I, I don't feel right. Every time I get, drink, I get sick." I do not quit and just, you know, like just having a little glass of wine. I was partying and drinking down, and, and, and it was ugly. <clears throat> and so God delivered me from all of the partying, all of that life, and I, I, was, I said, well, I want to live for you, God, and I'm going to do my very best. Help me to live for you. And I said, you know, I said, I really need to settle down. I need to, need to show me who I need to marry. I need a wife. To, I, I'm ready to settle down. And, and so I had a friend down at uh, PRC, I went back down there, was visiting there, and Eva walked up, uh, and he was like something hit her. 
this is her. I was like, okay, you know. And so we started dating, and we married, and I was working. I went left the railroad, and I went to Hercules, my, where I could be home with the kids and with her more. And, and I was there only three months and got laid off, so I ended up going. The jobs were real scarce in, in the early 70s and this time. So I ended up going to McDonald's as a manager training, and I was there for three years. But during that three years, uh, I built built for her a new house. I even had a concrete driveway. I ha had one since, but I had a nice, uh, a, a very nice house there. And it had, uh, she wanted shag carpet. I bought her, put shag carpet in. Had a, a, it was a California style house with glass up in the, in the top with the seat from front to back up high. And it had five beams going through. It was a beautiful place and on two real pretty acres. And I had everything going my way. I, we were going to the, our denominational church, and I was Sunday school teacher. She was Sunday school teacher. And we were doing really good. And my cousin moves in next door, Charles, my cousin. And he starts telling me, he said, you need the Holy Ghost. I said, well, I got I, I'm pretty sure I got it. He said, well, you need to baptize in Jesus' name. I said, I've been baptized. And I'm sharing this not to try to say this is what you need to do, but just I'm being honest what I went through and what happened to me, and I haven't got time to go into doctrine and all that kind of stuff. But I went <coughs> to, um, to church there with him to visit, and uh, they said, we're going to get baptized. I said, well, why not? It was the day before Thanksgiving. And so they baptized me. They said, when you come up out of the water, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. I said, well, whatever. And so I didn't. They baptized me. So it's Thanksgiving. They said, well, probably you're going to get the Holy Ghost. Thanksgiving table. I said, now wouldn't that be something? And so uh, I didn't. So that night I went home. I laid across the bed in the front bedroom. I said, Lord, if I, I'm supposed to have something more than I got. I said, I want to be everything I can be for you. And I received the uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost there in my front bedroom. She came in and she said, I want that. And I told her, explain what it was. And then she stopped. She said, no, that, that wasn't what Grandma did. I, I don't want nothing to do with it. And there was six months from the time I got it till she got it. The, the devil was going all over her. He was trying to destroy her. Uh, she was uh, uh, left and went to the uh, her, her preacher and former preacher, and he said, he's gone off the deep end. You might as well divorce that man. He's going crazy. And she went to Mama's, and I told her, I said, look, I'm trying my best to live for God. We need to figure this out. Come back. And so she came back, and she got worse. She got to the place she was uh, going into raging. She would throw stuff. She would jump on me and start beating me. And it was just, and the boys were sitting there watching this terrified. I said, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. She's going to destroy herself and the boys and, and, and all over religion. I said, this, I said, God, you know, we got something got to give. And so something like said, you need to fast. I said, well, I've I like to eat, and I work at McDonald's. How am I going to fast and go to McDonald's and watch all these hamburgers go through? I said, okay. And I said something like, I said, I'm going to go on a three-day fast. And I didn't know at that time. I didn't know nothing about fasting. And I said, I'm not going to eat or drink no water for three days. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. God's got to do something for her. And so I didn't, I didn't drink any water. I didn't eat. And on the but the third day, I was going to fast until like the next morning. My supervisor uh, called me and said, hey, uh, we're going to Wagon Wheel to eat ribs. He said, you're going. He would found out I wasn't eating. I don't know how. I guess the devil told him. I don't know. <laughs> so he hauls me down to, to the Wagon Wheel, and I'm sitting there. He said, watching them eat these ribs. And they put a glass of water there. I said, I'm going to sip this water, but I'm not going to eat. I already said I wasn't going to, and I'm not. And so I sat there and watched uh, my supervisor and the manager of the other McDonald's over on Broadway Drive eat those ribs. Man, they smelled so good. I didn't touch them. And and it like the next it was like the next night or so. Something woke me up standing at the foot of my bed, and I said, "What?" I said, "I'm dreaming." And something said, "Read Acts 10:38." I said, "No, sir, you mean Acts 2:38?" He said, "No, 10:38." I said, "Wait a minute." Oh, I'm dreaming. I'm just going back to sleep. I went back to sleep the next morning. This is the Bible that my neighbor gave me. 
and it's the same Bible. I grabbed the Bible. I turned to Acts 10:38, and it said, I said, I want to see what it said. I said, maybe this wasn't just a dream. Maybe that was somebody standing there. And I read, it said, and Jesus of Nazareth, being anointed the Holy Ghost, went about doing good, healing those that were oppressed by the devil. And I knew the devil had jumped on her. I said, hey, that's, that was, if God was with me and was the last scripture. I said, hey, that was, that was an angel or God or somebody telling me he's getting ready to, to deliver her. I said, man. And it wasn't like, like the next time we had church, she went to the church by joining. And she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and changed totally. It was like turning the light off and turning the light on. I was going, like, man. And in the meantime, I had a friend that was bipolar, and I'd been trying to get him delivered and, and well and healed. And he was had some spirits that, that had attached itself to him. And I, I went. He called me. I was at McDonald's. He said, "You need to come out here. They're getting ready to, to, to tow me off to the bug house." I said, "Oh Lord!" I said, "Okay, I'm coming out." And I went, drove out in the country, out to the coast of where I lived, and I went in the house and I went first to talk with his parents. I said, "You know what's going on?" They said, "He's lost." I said, "Do you mind if I go in and, and talk to him, see if I can help him?" And I went in there, talked to him a little bit. I said, "I said, let's pray." I said, and I grabbed his hands and I started praying with everything within me. And I heard something go, <sighs> breathe it. I said, Lord, what is that? And I looked up, and it was him. And his eyes were about this big. The veins popped out all over his neck. He said, and I said, oh, Lord. I said, that's, that's the devil. <laughs> and, I, and I said, I said, look, Gary, I can't help you. I said, I'm praying, and I ask God to deliver you of all this. I said, but don't give up. And so I went and told his parents, look, I can't, can't help you. I said, but I'm going to be praying for you all. And I started at the car. And I was walking there. He had a bedroom on the front of the house. He had the window open. And he, I heard something say, protect your family. I said, oh, boy, yeah. And I looked, it was him. He was sitting there with that sink, his eyes still like there was. And he, I said, what did you say, Gary? He, he said, I said, protect your family. And, go like, and the voice, it wasn't even his. I said, oh, Lord, what's the devil up to now? I said, you know, <laughs> oh, Lord. And so the same supervisor that carried me out, he, he uh, started in on me. And he, I won't go into the whole story, but he plotted against me and was doing some stupid stuff. And, and I, I told him, I said, look, I'm not going to be no part of your game. I said, I don't have to work here. And if, they, if my bosses are going to let you act like this and work here, I'm going to serve God, and I'm not going to put up. With it. So I left, and I ended up going offshore. <clears throat> and I worked out there like six months. And... And every time before I leave, I'd pray, Lord, put a hedge around my family. I don't know what the devil was trying to tell me. Protect your family. Protect your family. I said, but you know what's going on here. And so on, in May, I, I, Eva told me, she said, Son, I saw somebody walk past my the carport window there. She said, I, she said, I know it was somebody. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call McDonald's. I said, that supervisor's gone. Now. They, they figured out. They put him managing the store that I was at to, after he did what he did to me and found out he was selling drugs out of there and he was doing all kind of stuff so they fired him so I called the guy that took his place I said look um, I think I might need you to not work offshore anymore he said he said do you have any openings he said I'll give you your job back at the same store I said well when can I start he said out of courtesy to your job he said you go work this hitch. I was leaving like the next morning. So you go going to work that hitch when you come back the job's yours. And I said okay. I said Lord I don't know what's going on. I said, we felt like something was wrong. You could just feel it. I said you know you gotta you gotta watch after my family here. So I went on out there and I was on Friday night, May the 4th. I was out there and I was working. I was working late. And I was and, and they called me and Officer, you got a phone call here. So I went up there, and it was my dad. He said, look, you need to get them to get you to the bank, get you to the shore just as soon as you can get here. So I said, what's wrong? He said, Eva's been hurt. I said, oh. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, that's all I can tell you, get home. So I went and told my, my bosses, and they just ordered a helicopter to come pick me up. And so I said, I'm going to call my neighbor, my cousin next door, see if I can find out what's going on. So I called. And the, my pastor answered the phone. I said, what are you doing there, brother? He said, 
He said, oh, you don't want to know. I said, what's wrong? He said, I can't tell you. There's all kind of people around. I can't, I can't talk. I, he said, you ask questions, and I'll give you a yes or a no. He said, I said, I said is, is Eva all right? He said, no. I said, is she dead? He said, yes. I said, that's all I can tell you. I said, well, what about the boys? Are they okay? They, he said, yes, they're fine. He said, that's all I can tell you. He, he like, I got to go. And so I get home, and lo and behold, I find, well, well before I, let me just get this part. I, I fell apart. I broke down. I said, I can't do this, guy. There's no way I can even go home. And, and it was like the devil said, Joe, you can't do it. He said, go out there. I was about two or 300 foot up off the water on a high-rise platform, building platform. He said, and jump off in that water. He said, you can't, you can't do this. I said, wait a minute. I said, I know that's you, Dad. I got two little boys at home, and they've lost their mama. I said, I got to go home. I said, I'm going home. I said, God, I'm not even going to attempt to go home unless you do this through me. Do, you do this for me. I have no strength to do this. I'm not able to do this. And something like said, okay, just let me do it. And so I came home, and I moved. Uh, we had the, I found out what happened. Uh, she had been broke in on in the house there, and, and she had been raped and, and murdered. Her throat was cut there. And the boys watched all this, and they made it out the back door, and she went out the back door, and they, uh, to the neighbors, and she collapsed, and trying to get help for, for uh, the boys, she, she ran. If she hadn't ran, they probably, the guy probably would have killed the boys. I don't know. But I, I, was, I found all this out when I got home. I said, Lord, I said, where was, where was my head? And he said, he said, look, you trust me. You, you said you would trust me. I'll see you through this. I said, okay, I said, I'm going to do my best, and, and you're going to have to do it. And I, uh, I was there, went through the funeral, and I felt numb. I felt like part of me had been just ripped off, and I was left bleeding and, and injured and sick. And, and even I know God was seeing me through it, I was just totally devastated. And I said, man, you know, and, and, I, and one of my, some of my friends helped me. Uh, I waited a, a week. And they gave me, I didn't have any, had $5,000 worth of life insurance for her, and that covered the funeral, and that was about it. And I had a house note, and I had two boys, so I went back to work the following week with my friend on his job before I go back to McDonald's. He said, you don't need to jump in McDonald's right now. Come work with me, and you do what you can do, and that's good enough. He said, this, I'm the boss. He said, you don't have to jump through no hoop. Just come on out there, and I'll help you. So I went out there and made a week's pay, and then I went back to McDonald's, and God, uh, I, I was amazed that I was able to go there and do, and do that. It was only his mercy that I was, and I moved, had moved into my mom's house because it just didn't, they didn't want me down there, and I stayed up there about two or three weeks, and I said, I can't live here. i got to go back there. I've got to face this. I can't, and so the boys and I moved back there, and my pastor said, you need a, you need help. You need a wife. He said, you pray to God. He said, I'm praying that God will send you a wife. And you pray God will send you a wife. I said, oh, Lord, I don't think no woman would want to end this situation. I said, better take somebody really special. It, it couldn't be just any old body. And I said, okay, I'll pray. And so I prayed. I said, Lord, you know, if you got a a wife lined up for me, for me and a mama for these boys. I said, that would be wonderful. I said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And so I had a piece of glass cut before all this even happened. It had all this Venice wine with glass there in Hattiesburg. And it was a Saturday. And I, uh, I had been going to David and Giant's concerts. And that's when I met Brother David and Brother Morgan and all the people from Laurel. And came to know them at the concerts when they went, and she had went to some of those concerts during this time we were back and forth, and they played, a, Brother David and the Huffs and Brother Morgan played a big part in her deliverance, and so um, uh, I went to, um, I, I went to Dick's Glass to get the, I went to Ben Schwanger to get this glass cut, and they were closed. I said, well, I'll go to Dixie Glass, and I go in, and so, 
Simon, her youngest son, the two boys, Luke and Simon, uh, he was asleep. So Luke and I went in with the, with the glass, and there was a girl standing behind the counter, of course, of course Barbara. And uh, I got to talking. I didn't know her. I, I thought I'd seen her, but I didn't know. I didn't know her. And I said, well, I hope it doesn't rain. I said, it looked like today it was kind of like overcast. I said, I, I want to go to hear David and John's. And Laurel, she said, well, I was there last night. It was really good. I said, well, good. I, I'm coming tonight. And so I go home, and I get ready to, later that Saturday evening to go up there. And I get out of the car out in the parking lot, and they had a flatbed with David and Giants playing on the, and, and all these people around them in, in the parking lot. <clears throat> so I put Simon over in a buggy because he, he was two, two and a half long. Of course, about, and so I go rolling over there. Get almost, I see Barbara and her mom and daddy, and I see them over there. And I said, uh, there's that girl from Dixie Glass. I rolled up there, and right when I got up close enough, Simon could see. He started saying, Mama, Mama. I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's not Mama. I said, this, this is a, a lady that we met at Dixie Glass today while you were asleep in the car. I said, this is not Mama. And I got to talking to her. I said, are you married? She said, no. I said, I said well, maybe uh, sometime we'll, you, you know, we could go to church together or maybe go get something. She said, that would be good. And I said, oh, okay. And then it's like, okay, this is her. I said, well, I'm going to. I'm going to find out about this. So I said, I'm going to call my wife's best friend. And I called her. I said, I need to talk to you about something. She said, okay. She said, and she said, well, was the church? I said, I need to talk. She said, when you get home, call me. So I got home and I called her. She said, what is it you wanted to ask me? I said, I met this girl. She said, oh, no. I said, oh, Lord, here I go. She's going to fill my head with her, even her with best friends. I said, I met this girl. And I said, she's really stood out to me. He said, where does she work? I said, oh, Dixie Glass. She said, does she ever work fingers or pedal? I said, I don't know. I said, she said, well, ask her. I said, okay, I'll ask her. I said, in fact, I'll call her and call you back. I called Barbara. I said, do you work at fingers or pedal? She said, yeah. I said, you know, um, I asked her the, the lady's name. She said, yeah, she's a friend of mine. Her and her two kids comes in there. She said, why? I said, I don't know. I'll tell you. I'll find out later. I said, she asked you, did you know? Um, does she know? I, she knew you. And so uh, I called her back. I said, look, she works at the cleaners and pedals. She does. She did. She said, oh, no. I said, what's the deal? She said, you're not going to believe this. Um, Mr. Brother Kitchens, Mr. Barber's dad, and I wish him a, he's my buddy. We wish him a, a, a happy Father's Day today. He's, he's special, though. But she said that, that, Mr., that he had shopped at, at um when Dixie was Mr. Kitchens, knew her. He said, did you see him, a white-headed man and a, a, a black-headed young girl come through? I said, there was hundreds of people. I said, it seemed like I did, did, but I don't remember. I said, I was, in, I was in a daze. She said, well, she came through that line. He said, when she came through, I said, that's going to be Dwayne's next wife, and you're going to tell him. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, and she, she said, that's, I said, well, I guess God has showed me who I'm going to marry. And so, uh, we married, and and every, and God, I, I couldn't have made it without without Barbara, and she's her and her family's been a big blessing to me and a big help, and I I thank God so much for her and what she's done. <clears throat> but and and the and when the, when these these uh, when Eva when they started investigating this. They didn't have a lot of evidence, and they didn't have DNA back then, and so they arrested a, a guy. He was out on a weekend passing jail, and he was about a mile or two from my house at a little uh, beer place there. And so they uh, were trying to find somebody. So, that, and they uh, then they found two other guys, and that, that was they uh, said they were there, and so they had a trial. Brother David came to the trial and was there with me through the whole trial. And they convicted this man. And we always watch these shows and stuff about DNA. I said, one day, we're going to know for sure this man did this or he didn't do it. And so we get a call about 2012. And they said, you need to come down here. We have some, some news on your court case. I said, what court case? He said, well, with your first wife. I said, what? He said, yeah, come on down here. 
If I go down there, he said, you heard of DNA? I said, yeah, I heard of DNA. He said, well, that, we were, he told me how they, the Innocence Project came in and got the DNA and ran it, and it was a total, it was none of these three men. It was a friend of mine that all of his family worked with Hercules with my family and my uncles and aunts, and I worked with his brother on the railroad, and he was a, he was a preacher at the, the uh, Church of Cross College from there. He was a, one of the lay ministers, and it was his DNA that popped up there. I said, oh, Lord, that's not, you know, this can't be. And, and, I, and I said, and I had already uh, chose to forgive, and I taught the boys, we're not victims. We're overcomers through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're not victims, and I don't want you to live in a victim mentality. I said, God has blessed us. He, he's, he gave you a, a mom. He's gave us peace. He gave us joy through all this. And I said, he's going he's gonna to continue to see us through. But this guy, um, he had he'd went to his, um, one of his, his wife's co-workers is how they had his DNA. And he had broke in on her at night and raped her. He didn't kill her. And they found his fingerprint. And they went to his house. And they found all types of pornography and, and garbage there, all kinds of sex toys and all kind of uh, junk. And they said, what are you doing with this? He said, well, I have to know how to minister to these younger guys in the church. But he had been snared by this, this um, by Satan, just like you know, Cain was snared. And he, uh, the devil, he's out to steal, kill, and destroy and, and he's in jail, and I, this is my prayer. I pray every day. Uh, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl. Lord, let your kingdom come. Your will be done in each and every person on the earth. He knows us all by name. He knows our DNA. He knows, I don't, uh, uh, you know, we can do that. I mean, it's a blanket prayer, and God honors that. I said, you know, let these people the lost come to the saving knowledge of you and become Christians. And I said, and, and, and let uh, the, the people that's having problems, the people, and I said, all of the sick, and, and I said, heal the sick. I said, and, and minister to all the needs. There's a world of hurting people. I haven't met a person yet that hasn't got a wagon load of hurts and problems. But God is, he is a solution for all of our problems. And he came, and he gave his only begotten son. For he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we either serve God or we serve the devil. And he is so subtle, the devil is so conniving, that we may be serving him and not even realize it. We may be saying things that he has us say, that doesn't build people up. If I can't say something to somebody that builds them up, uh, I, I need to keep my, my mouth shut, you know, and I need to, uh, but God wants us to lift each other up, and he wants us to love, like he said, you love uh, him first with all of our heart. He wants us to, to, to serve him with all of our heart. And this man, I pray for him that did this. I pray every day, God, that your kingdom come, your will be done in his life. Let him become the man <clears throat> that you purposed him to be. Not a murderer, not a rapist, but a minister of your word that's saving souls. To me, that's that's pinning the tail on on the donkey. That's calling him, calling out the devil. That's a that's a you know blowing a wh blowing the whistle. We need to blow the whistle on the devil. We need to start recognizing who he is and what he's trying to do. He he's trying to. He wants to, to, to wreak havoc in all of our lives, but greater is he that is in us than all of the devils in the world. He can't touch us. And, 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 and I said, I questioned God, well, how did he get in my house? How did he murder my wife? And he said, and I get to thinking, well, how did John the Baptist lose his head? How did Stephen get stoned? I said, you know, I, and I can't question why he did it, but he, he, he taught me through this. You got to forgive, but you can be forgiven. I can't. I can't blame flesh. I blame. I blame Satan. I blame Lucifer for all of these problems that we've got. And he wants to today. He wants us to draw. To, to, to draw. 
nigh unto him, to, to come to him with our whole heart. There's no such thing as a part-time Christian. Either you are a Christian and you're serving God, or you, like, the, like Jesus told him, or either you're serving your father, the devil. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't want to be trapped in, in the, uh, giving him a nickel of my money or a minute of my time. I want my time to, to be spent wisely. I want my, my money to be spent wisely. And we as Christians, if we would bind together and spend our money wisely on, and make sure it didn't go to people and companies and stuff that was promoting all this garbage that we're fighting now with the devil, we could, we could, we could make a difference, just like the, the Bud Light. I mean, I, you know, they, they, they found out real quick uh, who God is, that, that the Christians have some power. And we need to take that. We need to take some, take back what the devil's stealing from us. We need to take back, uh, and we need to stand up, man up, woman up, and be a Christian. You know, not be a part-time Christian. We need to be on fire. He said, lukewarm, he's going to spew us out of his mouth. So we need to, to, to think about and be wise. It's just like a wise as a, a, a servant and harmless as a dove. And, and it's like, like an ostrich. He sticks his, when he gets scared or threatened, he puts his head down in that thing and leaves his whole body up in the air. And that, and, and what, what a target when you got your head down in the sand and your rear end up in the air. What's going to happen? You're going to get it kicked. <laughs> so so we, we need as Christians to, to quit sticking our head in the sand. We need to stand up for what's right. God is right. God is righteousness. God is holy. And we are to be a righteous, holy people. We're not to be of the world. Uh, and, and I hate to say this, but I'm going to tell you, Hollywood had not got a penny in my money. They're not going to get a penny <laughs> and with all their perversion, with all their garbage. I, I'm, I will, as for me and my house, I will serve God. I won't serve the devil or nothing to do with the devil. I'm going to name him. I'm going to call him out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to summons him. When this happened to me, I said, okay, devil. You did this, and I'm going to tell everybody I come in contact with about Jesus. I'm going to make sure you pay for this. I said, you're going to pay for messing with my wife and, and murdering my wife in front of my little boy. And Simon, Luke, the uh, oldest, he's done wonderful. He's a pleasure. He does, he's done really good on his job. He's excelled. He's a miracle. And Simon, when he got about 13, he figured out what he watched and what he saw. And he was already a little ADHD and, 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 and bipolar, had a bipolar. And the devil has wrecked havoc with him. And I pray and I pray that he has got to get to the place to where he will let God be God in his life. And he um, still wants to hang on to his, um, his steroids and his, his, um, you know, his mania highs. They had a, a, my doctor, my neurologist was a, first a psychiatrist. He said, I quit psychiatry because of, of these people that's bipolar. They love the high. It's higher than any drug feeling they have when they get in this mania. They terrorize the people around them. And <clears throat> that's what happens with uh, mental, mental illness. And, and it's, it's a shame because it's no different than diabetes or heart trouble. But it's something that our, our world needs to start recognizing and treating these people you know, and helping them. But Simon right now is in, in a, a, right above Seattle, he's in a mental hospital. He stayed in jail all over the United States, all over in Germany when he was in the army over there. He's, but, and, the, and the devil's been able to, to, to just wreak havoc in his life. But I know somebody that can take care of this, and I'm believing, and I'm not going to give up. Uh, God's going to deliver Simon, and he's going to, He's going to be a witness to God's power. And I, to the day I die, the day he dies, I'm not going to quit praying. I'm not going to, quit. I'm not going to give up. Because the devil has no right to, to take our children. He has no right to, to change our, the sexes of our children and make little girls boys and boys little girls and, and all of the garbage he's doing. But my prayer for you today is to draw closer to God. And I hope that what I've shared here today has been a blessing to y'all, and I hope that, that, that the people that's watching this that may be lost can uh, 
turn their hearts to God and to and cash in on there's nothing in the world like serving God. It's joy unspeakable. Through all of my storms, God gave me joy. He gave me peace. He gave me all that. He replaced what the devil stole. He, he's blessed me in every way I've turned. You know, uh, our house has been paid for since I was 32. He, uh, and, and we've had no, and we're not millionaires, but we, we are blessed. And I thank God so much for his blessing. And God wants to bless each of you. He wants to show the world through you what he could do. And I take no credit for being here. I'm still operating off of that, that prayer I prayed with God that night. You're going to have to do it through me. I'm here because he saw me through. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close in worship. And, and stand if you want to stand and worship with us. You know, the Bible says that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't always mean all things happen that are good. You know, we can go through the fire, but right in the fire, he's there with us. And that's the Father, that's the God that we worship. Could I put a thousand stories of what I think you're Because of you, God. And we praise you and we thank you. God, I pray to 